G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel post grand finale to discuss some of the best wins we've seen throughout the 2021 season. I'm joined once again by Druzy of the Druzy channel. I'm never on this channel these days, mate. The amount of uploads you have, I'm on about one out of every 15 uploads, so uh, it's nice to be back. Has been a strategic decision, and uh, it's paid well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, well frankly, him. my views have skyrocketed. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're going to keep it pretty simple. going to rattle through all 18 teams and what we believe to be their best win of the 2021 AFL season. Before we get into it, make sure you go check out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com, for all your ball grooming needs. You can get 20% off their elite products and free shipping if you simply use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. Thanks guys, let's get into the first team and I will start us off Druzy with Adelaide and their best win came in round 10 against the Melbourne Demons, of course the eventual premiers. Now Adelaide were the wooden spooners last year so they faced a pretty tough challenge in the Melbourne Demons in this game. They had shown some promise up to this point in the season but still sat in 15th position and the Ds were undefeated at 9-0. It was a cracking game from start to finish with the margin at each break under a goal and Oliver put the Ds in front by 16 points late in the final term so it looked like it was all done and dusted, but the Crows came surging back and Tex Walker put them in front with less than a minute remaining. Despite that, the Crows would hang on to a one-point victory to hand the Demons the first loss of their season. Brisbane up next, Jesse, for their win against the Cats back in round 15. Geelong were coming off a, a big win against Port Adelaide, if I remember correctly, and this was looking like it was going to be like a prelim matchup. Well, it was the prelim matchup the year before, wasn't it? Yeah. But looking like another potential prelim matchup at this point in the year. And Brisbane just ran through them very convincingly, and it just made them look like they were ready for finals. Unfortunately, the, the Lions went out in straight sets. So, yeah, this was definitely the highlight of the year for them, I'd say. So it was a 44-point win. Danaher kicked four. Rich and Zorko, who have been massive all years, just had one of their better games off the year as well. And out of the last 14, Jesse, they've only won twice against the Cats, the Lions. So uh, it, was a, it was a big achievement to get one over the Cats, which they don't do too often. The third team we'll talk about is Carlton for their win in round 20 against the St Kilda Football Club. There was a couple of tough ones. I was choosing between the Essendon one, but I thought Carlton looked even better in this game. Despite suffering a disappointing loss the previous week to the Ruse, uh, a win here actually kept them in the finals race, which uh, in hindsight yeah. is kind of funny. <laughs> The Blues were in the midst of a footballing review. David Teague was under immense pressure, um, but that they stood up and delivered their best win of the season. Sam Walsh was the best of field. He earned three brown low votes in this game with three goals and 26 possessions. And Harry Mackay helped himself to another five goals, which ultimately helped him win the common medal later that year. Blues won this game by 31 points. It was a good, healthy win. And like mm. I said, mathematically kept him in the race for finals. For Collingwood, it was a season of many downs, but this was a positive. Uh, Nathan Buckley's final game for the club, and they beat... Melbourne. Melbourne being beaten is a, a hot ticket if you're trying to get on this list for, the, for your best win of the season. This game was played at the SCG due to COVID and Collingwood looked comfortable all throughout. Their best term was the second with a six goal to two term. Darcy Cameron kicked four and it was a good send off for Nathan Buckley to finish his Collingwood career in style. Next up we've got Essendon's best win being their round 21 clash against the Western Bulldogs. The 10th place Essendon were taking on the top place Dogs who had recently beat Melbourne just two weeks prior. With an absolutely airtight top eight race this was a crucial win for the Dons and that's fair to say if they didn't win this game they wouldn't have made the finals mathematically. It would be an incredible effort for the Dons to overcome the Dogs and that they did and Peter Wright bobbed up with seven goals and a little bit of an announcement game to the rest of the competition mm. saying hey I'm still here. I was a hard draft pick, but don't forget about me. Bombers would hold on for a 13-point victory in what was basically the upset of the season, just about. There's probably quite a few upsets this year, but that one ranked pretty highly. And again, it was extremely helpful in getting them to qualify for the final eight. When they then went on to lose to the Bulldogs. My boys, the Fremantle Dockers' best win this season was the Derby. Ha <laughs> ha, cop that. You suck. It was round 22. It was a pretty boring game, though. To be honest, it was just nice to, to get the win against West Coast for the first time since 2015. Frio don't kick straight usually, and this was an exception, Jesse. We kicked eight goals in the first quarter, and just getting out to that really good start allowed us to go forward in the game with a bit of cushion because you guys had, like, the better second and third term. Clawed your way back into it, but by that, time, by that point, you guys were cooked. Caleb Sarong put the icing on the cake, the cherry on the top, the dagger in the heart of West Coast fans by kicking the goal of the year in this game as well. And of course, winning the best on ground, uh, Glenn Denning, Alan Nettle. And this was massive for us, Jesse, because we could have gone into finals mathematically at the time if we had have beaten St. Gilda. 
uh, Essendon would have got in anyway, but it just kept our hope alive, and then that was killed the next week, and the Dockers ended the season very poorly, but at least this was nice. The next team we'll talk about is the Geelong Footy Club for their Round 8 victory over the Richmond Tigers. It was a grand final rematch from 2020, uh, with many people believing that Richmond was still a major player, because this was obviously in the first couple of months of the season. Now, in recent history, the Tigers have had a bit of the wood over Geelong, you'd say, and of course beat them in big finals, the 2019 prelim and the 2020 grand final. So this was a bit of a statement game for Geelong to come out and announce themselves as a genuine contender. The Cats did trail at halftime before absolutely demoralizing Richmond mm. in the second half and went out to a 63 point victory. In the third term, they kicked seven goals in a row and Hawkins, Cameron and Rowan combined for an incredible 15 goals. It was a major statement to the rest of the comp and as we know, Richmond derailed in the second half of the year and Geelong made it all the way to a prelim. Round six, the Gold Coast Suns beat Sydney. And what a great game this was, Jesse, man. Like, honestly. Clash of the Titans. Massive. Now, like, c- considering how good Sydney played this year for Gold Coast to beat them at home was a, was a massive result. The week before, the Suns conceded 11 goals straight to the Bulldogs. And Sydney had beaten Richmond, being the Premiers. They'd beaten the Lions at the Gabba as well. Uh, so all signs were pointing to a Suns demolition which has been the case so many times in that club's career. But they didn't. They didn't get demolished. They won this game by 40 points. Nine goals to two in the middle terms, second and third. Ben King kicked five. Noah Anderson had 34 touches. And yeah, 40 points over the Swans who ended up making finals. Big result for the Sun Boys. Now moving to the other expansion side, the GWS Giants. We're going to nominate their elimination final victory over their crosstown rivals, the Sydney Swans. They were, of course, underdogs going into this game, and I think many people thought there was a top six buffer until the seventh and eighth, but the Giants made an absolute mockery of that analysis. This game was moved to Tasmania due to COVID, and it was one of the absolute games of the season. The Giants setting up a miraculous one-point victory with a six-goal to two second term. Toby Green was the subject of much interest in this game. He kicked mm-hmm. three goals, was best on ground, and also got suspended for bumping into an umpire. Despite only registering a single behind in that final term, that would prove to be the vital behind, and the Giants would hold on to an incredible one-point victory that would see Sydney surprisingly eliminated. This game reminds me of my sex life, only registered one behind. (laughs) (laughs) Hawthorne in round 22 went down to Tasmania for Clarkson's last game down in Tassie, and they beat the Western Bullfrogs 64-37. to They finished the season very well, Hawthorne. They uh, drew to Richmond. They beat the Bulldogs. I haven't read up on my Hawthorne fixtures. They beat Sydney. Yeah, beat Sydney. They, They had a good run into the end of the season, despite having some pretty average form to start it off. Uh, it was a low-scoring game, only one goal kicked in the opening term. Warple and O'Meara didn't play this game, so Big Dan Howe stepped up for 34 possessions. It was good to see some role players step up in this game as well. The Hawks only moved from 14th to 13th, so not massive ramica- ramifications for the latter, except for the top end, because it kicked the dogs out of the four eventually, who would end up going on to make the grand final anyway. Next, we'll talk about our mighty premiership overlords, the Melbourne Footy Club, and it seems really obvious, but I'm going to nominate their grand final as their best performance all year. It's not just their best win because it was the grand final, but I think they reached their highest level of performance, particularly For sure. in that third quarter and that fourth one as well. The momentum swung hard in this game. The Ds controlled the first quarter, and then the Dogs looked like they were owning the contest in the second and early parts of the third term as well. Midway through the third term, the Dogs held a 20-point lead, and like I said, the game was almost out of grasp, or at least it felt that way from Melbourne's perspective. But the Demons entered El God mode, as they say in Spain. Is that offensive? <laughs> Probably not. I'll just leave it <laughs> anyway. Not. But the Demons entered what we call God mode here at the Drew Footy Enterprises. They kicked seven goals in seven minutes and ultimately kicked 16 of the next 17 to absolutely circumcise the Western Bulldogs. I won't keep that one. <laughs> You're going to keep that one? Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the most dominant single halves of the season and ultimately it won the Demons their 13th Premiership. Petrarca was best on ground with 38 disposals and two goals, and Bailey Fritch kicked six goals. That's 39. Thank you for giving me this team to talk about, Jesse. North Melbourne's best win this year was against West Coast at Optus Stadium. A nice rainy night in Perth. I've really cooked the notes here. I gave you Fremantle and North Melbourne. What was I thinking? Yeah, it's very good. Very good. The 18th place, which is the bottom, like the worst team in the competition, North Melbourne, come to Perth facing the unlikely task of having to beat the West Coast Eagles. With the Eagles coming off some of their worst form in years, it appeared this was the best time possible to face them 
and it was because they were absolutely shit. In stormy conditions, the Roos bravely withstood an Eagles barrage in the first half to only trail by eight points at half time. I love how you've written this for me. You're degrading West Coast and it's just, it's well structured. I don't have to go off the dome because you're just insulting yourself here. This was Jaden Stevenson's best game of the year. Three goals, 38 disposals. Cam Zohar was massive as well. I think Nick Larkey, Taron Thomas from what, from what I remember. One of my favourite games to watch all season, this one, Jesse. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, they held the, the Eagles to one goal in the second and third term. They matched the intensity when the Eagles were coming, especially in that fourth quarter. They matched the Eagles' intensity when the Eagles decided to play in that fourth quarter. It looked like the Eagles were going to come back north, withheld the, the pressure from the Eagles, and they won the game. Adolf, just take that one, you'll play. I have no input. Moving on to the next one. The next team we will discuss is Port Adelaide uh, for their qualifying final effort against Geelong, making it back-to-back, -back, doing the same thing 12 months previous. But this one was a lot more emphatic. The power were kind of criticised all year, including by us, for their form against the best sides. They did beat the Dogs late in round 23 at Marvel Stadium, but their qualifying final performance was far more emphatic. Oli Wines had 33 possessions. Horazio Fantasia kicked four goals, along with uh, picking up a bit of an injury. Boke had 32 possessions as well. And frankly, the power just looked far too strong for Geelong there. You wouldn't have thought that during the season Geelong were the more fancy team, but mm. by the end of it, the power surged into a home preliminary final where they got ultimately clapped. <laughs> <laughs> For Richmond, their best win of the season was against Brisbane. I think Brisbane had just lost to St Kilda, uh, but Richmond had been in some bad form of their own, losing to the Saints, Gold Coast and Collingwood. They were in 12th, uh, so to beat Brisbane uh, side in the top four, it just put them back on the map temporarily. This game was played at Metricon, and of course, Dusty Martin ruptured his kidney. This was Rewalt's 300th game as well, and he kicked six goals, and Mubby Chol had a massive game, probably the best of his season. He kicked four as well, so was, yeah, massive, massive game from the big forwards for the Tigers. The Tigers ended up winning this game by 20 points, and it was that last quarter of still up for grabs. It was a very tight game, but the Tigers pulled away. 20-point win, and it kept them in the finals hunt. Next up, we've got St. Kilda, and unfortunately, I am disgusted to say that my team is well involved in this video <laughs> for yet another occasion. Round four, the Saints beat the Eagles at Marvel Stadium. The Saints had come off two poor losses. Uh, they lost to the Ds by 18. Admittedly, we didn't know how good the Demons were uh, back then. Uh, but then they lost to Essendon by 75. So w for a team that had won a final the previous year, uh, their backs were well and truly against the wall. And they were coming up against an Eagles side who had dispatched Port Adelaide pretty easily in Perth. So the Eagles were starting as favourites in this game. It was a good contest for two and a half quarters where the Eagles looked as a slightly more slick out of the two teams, but from that point onwards, St Kilda really took charge of the contest. They were 33 points down and turned that into a 20-point victory. For the non-mathematicians, that's a 53-point turnaround, and it was on the back of a Max King effort kicking five goals. Dan Butler also bobbed up with three, and Jack Steele had a typically dominant performance with 33 possessions. Your depression was maximised in this game. I remember you streaming it, and uh, you were very angry. Yes, I was absolutely filthy from an Eagles perspective, but you have to applaud the effort from the Saints. They really turned it on and the Eagles had absolutely no answer. I just saw a brat. Again? Yeah. Sydney's best win, of which there were many, I would say was against the Bulldogs, which was in round 17, coming off the back of absolutely slapping West Coast. This is a good video for West Coast. I like this a lot, but the week before, they beat you by, what, 92 points or something like yes, that? Yes, yes. Which was really good. They faced the Bulldogs, who were in their best form in the competition, which the, the, the sword changed hands when Sydney beat the Bulldogs, and they, they were termed the giant killers. Uh, being such a young side and causing massive upsets, this was the biggest off the bunch. Lloyd and Mills had 33 and 31 respectively. Dawson was massive in this game as well, I remember. Uh, but yeah, it was a 22-man effort from the Swans to get over the Bulldogs. And their pressure was so high all day. Uh, they were the best pressure team in the comp at this point in the season. And the Dogs just couldn't handle it despite being at home. This knocked the dogs off the top spot off the ladder, Jesse, and uh, sort of made the Swans look like a bit of a premiership smoky. Next up, we're discussing my boys, the West Coast Eagles, and I'm going to nominate uh, their round 13 effort against the Richmond Tigers. It wasn't a great year for great wins, but this win was definitely one of the best games I've ever been to. They're the two most recent premiers up until, you know, Melbourne won it, obviously, uh, but they were currently sitting 7th and 8th, and they would go head-to-head -head in one of the games of the season at Optus Stadium, you'd have to say. 
I'd say the Tigers controlled the contest for about three and a half quarters and their lead got out to about 22 points midway through the final term before the Eagles entered a mode that frankly we hadn't seen since maybe the first month of this season. They claimed three quick goals and then Josh Kennedy would be the hero, snapping a difficult set shot with 30 seconds to go to put the Eagles in front, which would ultimately earn them a four point victory. Unfortunately, this did not impact the finals race, but it did look like it at the time, so we're gonna cling to that. <laughs> the last team on this list is of course the Western Bulldogs, whose best win this season was in the prelim which was two weeks ago against Port Adelaide, where they won by 55 plus 16, 71 points. The Dogs were on just about the top spot thereabouts all season, but with a, a stinky ending to the season, got kicked out of the top four. So to be in a prelim, they had to do it the hard way. They had to beat Essendon, they had to beat Brisbane away, and then they had to go down to Adelaide to play Port in a hostile atmosphere, and they showed up, they delivered. They kicked the first five goals off the game before Port could even wake up, Jesse. And when you get that nice little buffer, it just puts the pressure on the other side, and it strikes fear into the opposition. Bailey Smith had one of his best games off the season, kicking four. McRae, Trelaw, and Bond also had great games, as they should and would all season. The margin was 10 goals at halftime. They won the game by 71 points and made their second grand final in five years. They probably didn't deserve to miss the top four, and they rectified that round 23 loss to Port and ended up making the grand final. So it was a bit of redemption in this game and uh, put them where they deserve to be. Alright guys, that is all we have for every team's best win of the 2021 AFL season. If you're enjoying this video, let us know in the comments, like the video, and we may even do a sequel. Every team's worst loss. Uh, and then I have another idea of a spin-off as well. It depends how this video goes, but hope you're enjoying the content. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Drewzy's channel. He's, he's a good guy. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.